I think the conclusion I came to, the one thing I can control that matters the most to me is becoming, oh, sorry, <laughs> is, uh, ah, oh, darn it. Hey, my name is Isaiah Shields. If you're new around here, let me catch you up real quick. About a year ago, I had the idea to go on a walk, one that could be measured in months. The idea proved to be surprisingly resilient. So when winter temperatures ebbed, I began walking. To give the walk some structure, I decided to walk from the westernmost point of the contiguous 48 states to the easternmost point. Points found, respectively, at Cape Alava in Washington State's Olympic Peninsula and at the West Quadihead Lighthouse in Maine. Since the real objective was to see the world at Marco Polo's pace, I decided to walk from where I lived in Provo, Utah to Cape Alava and then turn around and walk to Maine. So far, it's been an incredible journey. there day 125 Isaiah just wanted to quickly introduce you to what you're about to watch I recorded the following video on day 35 during a real rough patch I was pretty close to calling it off as I mentioned in the video it isn't actually the easiest thing to share so much about yourself to everybody and open yourself up to criticism stuff like that so I just ask you to bear in mind that I'm just trying to document a journey of growth and learning and while I might not be the wisest person in the world, the video you're about to watch is very sincere. I was trying really hard and I was going through a tough time. So not everything in it is gonna be perfect and it was almost 100 days ago, so I was still working on stuff and I've learned a lot since then. But it was a very honest portrayal of how I was feeling and what I was trying to figure out. So thanks for watching and uh, I hope you get something out of it. It was a moment for me. It's just a talking head, the whole video, but it was very vulnerable. So if that interests you, you can keep watching. If not, most of the full episodes aren't like this. Good evening, everyone. Well, I haven't taken any videos in a couple days, but I've found when you have, um, insights of times of strong thought you got to capture them soon or you will forget them you won't be able to articulate them as well the last couple days have been have been pretty tough I had a couple conversations with family and was pretty seriously considering having them drive up to where I was at the time and picking me up and being ready with the for the journey to be over I was struggling to remember or to realize fully, maybe for the first time, what I was hoping to get out of this living position. If you're not doing something intentionally, it was a very real concern that you might just be wasting your time. <laughs> it's interesting to think about, but there are just so many things we can choose to do with our day every day that sort of magnifies as you increase the, num the, the amount of time that you're talking about. So when I'm considering being gone for a year and I, I'm struggling to understand why you, you got serious considerations as to whether it's worth it or not to not only be gone and not pursuing the other objectives for a year, but to be doing something that's, to be frank, really, really difficult. 20 to 25 to maybe even a little a couple more miles a day is is really taxing. We have all this shoulder but they're both walking on the edge <laughs> to avoid the slanty part of the road. 20 miles. It adds up. It's slanty. 
hurts my toes. <laughs> <laughs> I just gotta capture you guys. Just keep walking. <laughs> oh, walking on this. <laughs> oh, jeez. Proof that what I do isn't easy. I mean, you have, you have to intentionally take every step, and it's it's very tough. And not only that, but there's so much uncertainty about so many things. The day before had winds. Or I mean, it was. It was literally, it required all my strength just to keep the cart moving forward at all. And when you magnify that and scale that up over miles and hours, it, it wears you down a lot faster. You don't go as quick. And it was just kind of nerve wracking because the one rest area I'd gotten to the day before, all the water sources were broken. Yeah, I was, I was struggling with what the point of all this was, what I was hoping to get out of it. And if, if I, wasn't able to come up with something that felt worth it, I, I probably would have called it off. But I think the thing I kind of came up with is my life, to be frank, doesn't look very much like what I would um, have chosen it <laughs> to look like, which can be pretty disappointing sometimes. For quite a long time I have had a, a sort of vision of what I, what I hope my life would look like for soon. And I'm sure one day I'll look back at myself and my naivete and, and laugh, but to be honest, I've, I've dreamed of a different life, to be frank. Uh, one where I have my own family and sort of center my life around that. And Everybody has different values and, and different priorities and that's something I've always really wanted. In other realms, it seems like <laughs> seems like sometimes you struggle the most to get the things that really matter to you. But uh, after a while, you know, you, you sort of have to make sense of things and come to grips with what you can control and what you can't control. And uh, I think the conclusion I came to is that the one thing I can control that matters the most to me is becoming... Oh, sorry. <laughs> is, uh, ah, oh, darn it. <clears throat> is, uh, is to become the man I want to be. To become the person, the, uh, the version of myself that I would be most proud of. To develop the care characteristics and traits and other people that really seem to have things figured out <laughs> and uh, those people are my late grandfather for one and uh, <laughs> Probably uh, Steve Carell, <laughs> too. My grandfather. Was probably the most selfless man I ever had the, uh, the pleasure of getting to know and to, to see in action. And it was so authentic. I think becoming who you want to be and having, having that be real has a lot to do with understanding truth and reality in the world so much and so well that it affects your your desires to use a cheesy sounding expression um, and so it, if you can understand the world well enough and gain enough wisdom and have enough experience about what is truth and what is reality and it kind of augments what you want because you you come to understand better what really makes you happy and so some people you can watch through their actions and through their expressions and the way they behave and sort of what you can see what really matters to them and my grandpa any setting he was in um, 
you could see he delighted in seeing others' happiness, which is remarkable to have that be so sincere. It wasn't anything he was trying to do, or, you know, be wanting to become a better person, knowing that's how he should be. He would just interact with his grandchildren and his children and, and ask them questions about their life. Yeah. I've never seen someone so genuinely happy to see others happy. And when he wasn't doing that, he was just a stoic hard worker. He would just add value to the world, work real hard. Oh, what, a, what a guy. And I, I promise I'm not trying to be stupid or trying to be silly or anything, but I also really admire Steve Carell, the actor, <laughs> which I know he's a, he can be a polarizing figure because uh, some of his portrayals he can convincingly portray a very, um, in some people's eyes, irritating man, <laughs> which is really funny. But the greatest part is that it is just a portrayal. Some people passing by. But I've seen, I've watched enough of his interviews and uh, things of that nature to sort of resonate with the way he interacts with and the way he handles attention. And um, given his celebrity status, Obviously, people are interested in his life, and interested in him, and you know, give him compliments on what he's accomplished. And you can see the way he's, <laughs> it's, it's, I find it so impressive. The way he's developed to sort of handle that is uh, with this faux hubris. You can see that it's so fake that it's just the most, elegant way of accepting their praise but not genuinely being arrogant about it. I saw this interview where he was talking about how he, how he gets a big, big kick out of embarrassing his kids so he's kind of the ultimate dad and he says when he goes to pick up his children from school He'll just show up in a, a bathrobe or pajamas with this giant dog head mask and he'll just carry like a kitchen appliance like in one arm like a, like a blender or a toaster and just you know, wave at people just wait for his kids to come out. And that just to me speaks of a beautiful soul because I don't think he does it for the attention I just think he does it because he finds it funny. Well, the reason that for now I've decided to keep going, despite the fact that uh, you know it's really hard. I'm going through stuff. Is you might not notice it or think it's correlated with the things I do every day, which is just 90% of the time walking on asphalt and pushing through wind and sun and thinking about where I'm going to get my next water. Or you know, meeting people and asking them what they're doing and answering people's questions about what I'm doing, which is tough because I don't always know. On, t to be completely frank with you, growth happens uh, in, in suffering. Growth happens in suffering. And I think having time out here every day my thoughts or to be listening to books and observing and sort of comprehending the world better and to hear others' stories and to hear others' experiences and to do something difficult all day, every day is uh, helping me to realize that bigger place than just my problems and that there's beauty all around even if even if there's also pain and suffering and, and uh, ugly and bad things in the world and I think it's helping me to care less about myself 
to just have that matter less to me. To understand other people better. To be more patient. To be more kind. And to value others more. To understand their inherent value. To see the variety of human experience and to see the beauty in all of it. To understand others' values and why they choose to live the lives they lead and how there's meaning in all of that. I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Just the one, I think. Pretty rare. I'm usually a two sneezer, if not like a 20. But especially towards the evenings of the day and the stillness, as things sort of settle down, as I sort of settle down for the evening. There's a lot of moments where it's, it's sort of the perfect conditions for reflecting, being pensive, and I'm not sure that's the right word. But to think and to evaluate and to ponder, and to enjoy the beauty of the surroundings that often, oftentimes are never really observed. It's a truck. And there's just something so unfiltered about the world out here. You know, they're not designed to be studied. So nobody's tried to craft that image. Nobody's tried to manipulate it to evoke an, uh, a reaction or to sort of configure it to leave a certain impression. So because you have so little of that, there's so much not trying to grab your attention. You, it's just you observe the world for what it is, unedited. <laughs> that is a difficult word to say. Unedited, unedited. I struggle with that one. There's a beautiful, uh, there's a beautiful peace, a beautiful stillness. And you get to slow down. You get to wonder what what really matters. With this very finite amount of time that I'm here, we all know that we have a finite amount of time as people. What paths should I pursue? What objectives should I strive for every day? And uh, in the end, what really matters? I think an examined life is made a little bit more rich. So for the time being, I'm gonna continue. And I'm gonna keep struggling. And I'm gonna keep doing hard things. And I'm gonna keep trying to see the beauty that is there in people in the world. To understand truth as it really is. And to uh, to become a better person. To be a person uh, Be a person my parents would be proud of. My grandpa. And, uh, to be a person you know God would be proud of. A son he'd be proud of. Someone you uh, who uh, used the opportunity wisely, and to uh, who made the most of it, and who did things that mattered with his life—not big things like curing polio, or although well, those are great. Maybe I'll do something big, but I'm not sure that's the mark of. I don't think that's the mark of greatness. 
think the mark of greatness is the things I was describing about my grandpa. So just to be a uh, truly a good person. I would really like that. And I think that's why I'm out here. And I think that's worth it. What, what I could gain from this is much more valuable than all the things I arguably are, are I'm arguably foregoing or might lose because I'm wasting time out here that could be spent on other pursuits. I think I might be chasing the greatest pursuit. It might be. Maybe. To learn to love. On to the next day.